Hello my art loving friends! In today's video I'm going to show you what I have received for art supplies so far since Christmas and after and play with this beautiful color, Windsor Violet. Okay, so I obviously received a Windsor & Newton Windsor Violet. Received loosely, this is actually something I bought for myself because I have played with this particular palette on my channel in the past and it does not have a violet in it or a purple or whatever you want to call it and I just felt that it would be a good addition so I put it on my Amazon wish list. As far as I know no one bought it for me so I ended up purchasing it myself. So we will be putting this in that palette later today. I also had this on my wish list. This is just one of those airtight palettes. You can see fairly simple, straightforward. It's about $10, opens up, and has, I believe, 18 wells. Yes, 18 wells, I just confirmed that. Plus an extra pull-out palette here that you can use if you need more mixing space, which I almost never, ever do. I love the silver. This feels very cheap, just so you're aware. This is the Mr. Pin brand, as far as I can tell, and I think it will be fine, but it is probably not super high quality, but I think it will still probably last you forever, as long as you don't drop something heavy on it. Then we have this gorgeousness, the Bao Hong Academy Watercolor Sketchbook. This was also on my wish list, and the palette and this sketchbook were thanks to my middle son and his girlfriend, Tori. You've met her on the channel. So this is 100% cotton, even though it's the Academy version. I am going to use this sketchbook in today's demonstration. And then I picked up Lindsay's Craftimo watercolor brush set because she had some brushes in here that I don't have and I thought would be really useful. This was one of those Black Friday purchases. So it has a magnetic flap on the front and you just lift that up and there they are. Look at that big, beautiful flat brush. That's the biggest flat brush I own now so far. Plus a beautiful size 12 round. My Windsor & Newton size 12 round is pretty much getting worn out finally. And this does have a slightly finer point than that one. Plus the cat's tongue brush beautiful dagger brush, a smaller round which is a size 8, that will be perfect, and a very useful rigger. I looked at several of the brush sets that have been released this year and felt that Lindsay's were the best suited for the style of painting that I do and that's why I chose hers. And hopefully I'm not wrong because we still have Christmas with my daughter-in-law and my oldest son. Hopefully they didn't get this for me because it was also on my wish list and I went ahead and grabbed it. <laughs> so we'll see. If it's a duplicate, I will just return one and replace it with something else. Like I do need maybe a Winsor & Newton Burnt Umber. I don't know, I'm deciding on that because I don't like Winsor & Newton paints all that much, except I do enjoy having this small collection of paints, but we'll see. This is the Paul Rubens, I believe this is the precipitated version. I tried to look that up online yesterday and there are two different sets, so I got a little confused. But regardless, this is the one that every color is made with PBK11. This is stuff you could easily do on your own. However, sometimes it's just really fun to have the set that's already done for you. These are 15 mil tubes. For example, this is a PBK11 with a PV23, so it's going to be a highly granulating violet. That's gonna be a highly granulating green, pink, yellow, blue, an ultramarine blue and black, and so on. So we will play with these in a future video. I'm really excited to have them. And last but not least for today, we have the Art & Fly Premium Watercolor Pad 100% Cotton. Now one of you guys recommended that I try this paper because it is more affordable. Two sides are glue bound, like I said, 100% cotton, cold press, and I do have the Gin Crafts 100% cotton paper too that I don't know that I have tried out yet on this channel. So it will be fun to compare this, maybe that one, maybe Arches and B, all the 100% cotton papers side by side. So if you would like to see that, make sure you're subscribed and eventually when I get to that, it will notify you in the YouTube bell area so that you can make sure you don't miss it. As far as today goes, we need to add this Windsor Violet, which is a dioxazine violet, to this palette. So you can see the colors that I have so far here. The last time I used this, 
I was really wanting a violet. One of you guys recommended I get the Windsor Violet. You thought I would really like it and I followed your advice and that is what I put in my wish list and what I have. So I have room for another full pan in here. What I might do since I've already had to add this opera rose onto my swatch sheet and just tape it over the top of it, instead of trying to add the violet in kind of randomly, I probably will just rearrange these and redo the swatch sheet, but I do have a painting of a sunflower that we're going to do, which unfortunately does not use Windsor Violet, but we will swatch this out and you can see how beautiful the colors are because even though Windsor and Newton are harder paints for me to work with because they are harder, literally, <laughs> they do have beautiful colors. And there's just something about a Windsor and Newton paint that you can just tell the color is just rich and deep and beautiful, but it does take a little more effort to rewet them. So sometimes people, well, sometimes I get frustrated when I'm trying to use them in a painting. If the water I have pre-sprayed in them has dried up already, then it just takes some more time and effort, which is why I don't always go to this palette. However, I am always quite happy with the colors that I get when I actually do use this palette. So. Here we have what's left of all my Windsor & Newton paints because I did get rid of all the others. Do I want to replace this burnt umber? Because I do have gift card money that I would have plenty of money left to buy a burnt umber. I'm not sure, I haven't decided. I'm gonna ask you guys for some suggestions in a later video on what I should get with that gift card money. You can see in here that I use full pans for this and that is my preference for all of my painting is to use full pans. So I've pulled out one more full pan. I'll fill this up. It won't have time to dry today. I've already opened this up and you can see it kind of squished everywhere because yeah, it comes out quite aggressively. <laughs> All right, I'll squish this in here. I know I should probably do the multiple pour thing, but I don't. And then I'll go ahead and pull this out. Maybe just with the brush here. I don't have water here, but I'll go grab some. Just there's a bunch of paint in that cap and I'll squish Squish that off on the side there. And I don't have time to let this fully dry in the pan. It's already sticky and tacky. It will probably dry quite quickly. However, I'm still just gonna use this here in the next few minutes. Used hardly any out of the tube, so this will last me for quite a while. I will label this, clean the brush, and then decide how this palette should be set up in the new way, and then we'll do a painting. First things first, let's play with this Windsor Violet. I have a piece of scrap arches paper. I'll wet the bottom part so that we can put a swatch and it'll hit wetness and we can use salt, the whole works. I do have the new swatch sheet over here ready to go. Okay, as you know, this is still very wet paint. Let's pull some out over here. Ooh, it already has a film over it and it's literally been 10 minutes. Wow, look how pretty that is. So pretty. I'm not sure how pigmented I want it. We'll try that. Let that run for a second just so we can see what that's about. Okay, not too much. Kind of the water bunched up on the edges, so not ideal. I should have made it a little bit more even, but we're just playing, it's fine. Okay, we'll get some more. A little bit more mass tone up here going, even though it's already quite dark and pretty. Just take it down again, why not? I'm having fun. And salt. We'll let that dry and take a look at it here in a minute. In the meantime, I can work on this swatch sheet here. I'll put this over here where you guys can still see it in the screen and do my new swatch sheet. One thing with these paints that I like to do is spray them ahead of time because they do seem to be a little bit drier and I probably should clean up this Windsor yellow a little bit before I go ahead and put that on the swatch sheet because it is very contaminated. <laughs> it has a lot of other colors in it. it would be nice on the swatch sheet to get a pretty good representation of what the actual color is. Should probably clean up this yellow ochre a little as well. Little contamination, little cat hair, never hurt anyone, right? 
probably should clean up my opera rose a little bit. I hate cleaning up my colors. It feels like a waste of paint, but sometimes you should. And it actually is not too much of a big deal. Like it doesn't take too much of the paint away when you clean it up if you're careful. Considering I don't have these colors to replace them, it's probably good enough. All right, I'm gonna put this a little bit more over here. And I should probably get a slightly smaller brush. This is my size 12. Let me grab the 10. I don't think I need a six because these swatches are pretty big, which is great. I love it when you can have nice room to swatch your paints. A little bigger than half pans. It's always a bonus. All right, and this is the transparent yellow. Very pretty. Grab a little more. And some salt, which I put the lid on. Why did I put the lid on? Pretty dried out already. The salt may not do much. Skipping one so I don't accidentally touch edges. This one's going to be the Opera Rose, which is actually surprisingly light fast in my own testing so far. I can link the light fast test that I have for you up in the corner on these paints up to this point. It's pretty impressive on this Opera Rose. So if you would like to use an Opera Rose that is pretty darn good as far as home light fast testing goes, then this is a good option for you. Viridian. I don't know if this is the actual Viridian. I made this palette back in the days before I realized how important pigment information would be. So I can go look on their website because I know which series of paint and you know, professional versus non-professional that I had. I can go look it up or I can contact the person. I gave these paints away in a giveaway on my channel, the ones I had left in tubes. I could try and contact her and see if she can give me the information. If she even still has it, it's no big deal, but it's always something that's kind of fun to know. And it's something I've come to depend on in my later years here with my experience with watercolor is I really want to know the pigment information and the information that's on the tube. So when watercolor users first start out, that's just not something they care about or even know they should care about. So something I try and teach my students, I'm like, I know you don't know or care right now, but if you get into your watercolor career and you really start loving it, it's something you're going to want to know. And so it is important to include that <laughs> on your swatch sheets now because of that fact. This is the Windsor Yellow. Very pretty. Also here guys, I am using my new camera. Can you tell a difference in quality over my previous videos? I'm still trying to figure out some of the settings and whatnot. In fact, I watched only like one and a half very short videos on it because that's all I had the patience for. <laughs> and I assume I still have a lot more I can play with as far as settings go, but this is it so far and I had enough money, you guys, I told you in that Q&A video that with the money that I made from YouTube this year, which was about $1,000, once December hits anyway, it'll be about $1,000, that I would buy a new camera so that I'd have better quality videos, even though they weren't horrible. I just noticed when I zoomed in and when I had my editor, which she only does shorts for me currently, but when she makes my shorts, the quality of the shorts were pretty poor in my opinion. And so I decided a new camera would probably be a really good idea. This is permanent sap green. Plus I have enough art supplies. I don't really need any more. So spending that money on a camera seemed like a good idea. There's some art supplies I still want as we talked about in the beginning of the video, but not a whole lot left that I really need. Point is, I am dying to know if you guys can see a quality difference with this camera. And when I very first tried recording with it, it kept like freezing up saying, I don't know, some message about needing to wait. Recording interrupted, please wait. And then it would just sit there forever. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a good start. This is not gonna work. 
but I figured the solution was probably pretty simple. I was hoping it was anyway, and looked at the SD card I had, and it was a class four, and this camera records at a high enough quality that the class four video card, SD card, just wasn't keeping up with it. At least that's the solution so far because all I did was put in one of my other micro SD cards, which was a slightly higher quality, slightly faster one. And it seems to be recording so far. It hasn't given me a message that it isn't recording. So fingers crossed that all of this footage is being caught. Anyway, I wasn't going to do all this swatching for you guys in real time, but turns out I have a few things to tell you. So here we are. This is the Windsor Blue Red Shade. Is it? Yeah, I think so. I have an ultramarine in this set as well, so I'm just trying to figure out which of the two this is, but I think this is the Windsor Blue. It says, nope, that is the ultramarine green shade. Sorry about that. Ultramarine green shade and yep, it got into my rose. I'm just going to have to live with that. This will be the yellow ochre in this one. Yeah, see that one takes some effort to get a good color payout. I'll dig into that more and get a little more of a mass tone up on top. And see in my old swatch sheet there, I did put an extra mass tone stripe over it afterwards. May do that with this one, but I don't know. I don't know that it's really necessary. It's fun to see it, but I don't know that it's necessary. All right, this will be the permanent alizarin crimson. Did not get nearly enough color there. The colors on the sides aren't quite dry enough. I probably should have waited just a little longer, but that's all right. Not a huge deal. Swatch sheet is just to give you a good idea of what your colors look like so that when you go to choose a color on your painting, you're choosing the right one. That's what I use it for anyway. I don't know what you guys use yours for. Now this is the Windsor Blue Red Shade. Oh yeah, I can tell. So it's more like a phthalo blue. And the purple went right into it. <laughs> Definitely not waiting long enough. It's okay, it's still pretty. The last color here will be the Burnt Sienna. Yeah, see I kind of dug into that, did not get much color payout. So definitely different than some of the other brands that I use. But as I mentioned, like when these colors dry and whatnot, they're just really pretty. They don't disappoint. It's just sometimes harder for me to use them initially. All right, you can see how this one's dried as I've sat here and chatted with you. Still very wet though, so we'll give it some more time. Where that water pulled up on the edge because the paper was bending just a little bit, it created this really pretty back run, but I'm not sure you want a back run in your painting, so keep in mind that it may do that if you're painting. And I'll give this time and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay, I have sketched out the little lesson from class 101 that I am still trying to finish. They gave me a 14 day extension off the last time I talked to you guys about it when it was expiring in like two or three days. And because of the holidays now I only have six days left. But anyway, this is one of those lessons. She has you put on the masking fluid very thickly because she says when you do that, it comes off way more easily. Finally occurred to me to use the brushes that I got in the haul today. I don't know why I didn't think of that for the swatches, but that's okay. So large flat and the cat's tongue will be used today. We'll see if I need any more. Got fresh water and I will water the whole background. Oh, this brush is nice. I can tell already. I love the amount of water I get in it. The water is soaking into the paper just like I expect nice cotton paper to do. Again, she starts with the ultramarine blue in the background as usual for her paintings. I did have to wait quite a while for the masking fluid to dry because she has you put it on so thickly, but no big deal. I just watched YouTube videos until I was ready. A little bit thicker here and there. Let's use the cat's tongue brush. I did rinse the sizing out of them. Grab some of that blue, some of this permanent sap green. Mix that all together. Yep, I am having to dig quite a bit into this to get a good amount of pigment. Adding more of the ultramarine blue. Trying to get a darker color here. 
So the water is soaking into the paper very quickly. These are far enough away from the blue that I think I am going to go ahead and put some of the yellow in there and risk that because as you know, that could turn green. I'm gonna put some yellow in there. I don't think that'll go through, but there's a couple of really light areas in there on the masking fluid that'd be fun. And a couple here and there. I think I want to increase the darks a little bit. I don't have the right kind of darks in this set, so I will make some with my burned umber and my sap green. Maybe a little of the black. Oh yeah, I like that. I add some warmth into it and it's it's actually quite pretty. I love getting a little bit of warmth in the paintings. All right, let's see how much that actually lightens as it dries. It should be pretty interesting. I will leave you on recording for time lapse so you can see that and I will just speed that up for you guys. So I turned 10 minutes into 12 seconds here and as far as I can tell, there's not really any drying shift. I don't know, do you guys see a drying shift? Because I don't, which is awesome. Good paint, good paper. Believe this is dry enough. It is barely cool to the touch. And I will use this gift from one of you guys, very good YouTube friend, to take off the masking fluid. This is also a good test to see how this paper takes masking fluid because this is the first time we will have tried masking fluid on this paper. So sometimes you can just grab it and pull it. Hers just came off super easily. She was using the Winsor & Newton masking fluid. I am using two or two and a half year old PBO drawing gum masking fluid. So mine is older than recommended since you are supposed to use up masking fluid within six months of purchasing it. Even as much as I paint, I find that it is hard to use up that much masking fluid in that amount of time. This is a more realistic test of how does masking fluid come off in a realistic setting? It seems to be fine. It does not seem to be ripping the paper or anything like that. I have mentioned before that sometimes this PBO masking fluid leaves a little bit of a blue residue, at least for my students, and then I kind of sort of noticed it on some of my paintings recently. I think maybe just because it's old and I'm getting to the bottom of it. However, it is not noticeable once you paint over it. I do have Winsor & Newton masking fluid that I received at the Mexico retreat. That was super fun. I did a video on that, so I will link that in the corner for you. I do have that entire bottle. However, that is now over a year old as well, and I haven't used it since because I have been trying to use up this one because they say there's expiration dates on these things. <laughs> So I was using my oldest one first. I am getting to the very bottom of this. You can kind of see how low it is. Regardless, it is taking me quite a while to get this masking fluid off. So I will just skip forward, but you can see real quick before I do skip forward, I do have a little bit of discoloration on my paper. I've removed the masking fluid. I have a little bit of line streaks left. Again, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. So let's just begin and see what we think. I wanna use this super light yellow. This is my Windsor yellow and do all that level one of painting that she recommended in her class. Again, this is Painting Hyun. It is a class 101. And then we are supposed to go through with little thicker paint. The light's supposed to be coming from up here. I really like this brush. <laughs> and then we add in some yellow ochre to really kind of get in some of the deep colors in the sunflower. This paper is incredibly nice to work on. It is such a delight. It's right up there with arches and my etcher sketchbook, the bao hong, I mean, this is bao hong paper, but the bao hong block that I've tried before, this feels great. And I do end up working on the back side of the paper later in this video and it feels equally as nice. So I can definitely recommend this sketchbook so far. I haven't found anything wrong with it yet and I love it. As far as the painting goes, I make a few simple mistakes, something that I fix later in the video. So definitely keep watching for that because I think you're going to want to see it. All right, I feel that I have lost a few of my very important highlights because I was not being careful. So let me go get my bleed proof white. I think we'll fix that. 
Ooh, I've added some water in here and it has made that quite lovely. Let's use the rigger brush from Lindsay's set. I will dip in some water and just get in here and get some. This is still very wet. I have a huge thing of cat hair in it already. So I should probably wait till it's drier, but I kind of want it, oops. I say I kind of want it to blend in, but yeah, that's a lot. Sometimes accidents like that are quite pretty. So we will decide later. Let's let that dry and see what we think after that fact. It has only been like, I don't know, 60, 90 seconds or so. I decided I don't want that to dry completely. I want to grab some burnt sienna. Chica's going to help me and mm, maybe I should let it dry. Look, I dabbed some burnt, hey, hey, that is not edible. Burnt sienna into there. Excuse you. <laughs> nope. Okay. I do need to let it dry. It's not going to let me work with it at this level. I wanted to add some burnt sienna in there and have it mix in before it fully dried, but it's just not taking any paint right now. Probably because this is more like an acrylic polymer. I'm not really sure, but it's not working the way I wanted it to, so I'm gonna let it dry some more. Things here are still fairly wet, but I'm gonna grab some paint and see because the key with things like this is contrast. So if we can add some pretty massive contrast here, we might get a winner. What ends up happening instead, in my opinion, is it becomes a little muddy looking, not as clean, clear, and crisp as I was looking for. Things are dry enough. They feel even less than cool to the touch. Again, when I do these class 101 things, I'm not fully happy with my paintings. I think doing someone else's idea is just not as intriguing to me <laughs> as doing my own idea. So I don't spend the time and effort that I sh probably should on them, but it is what it is. Here we are, just so, so. I decided I wanted to try this again. <laughs> so we swatched all this Da Vinci paint, but we didn't get to do a painting with it in the last video. I thought this would be a great opportunity for that. So I have my swatches here. I know what my colors are. Did the same drawing. I mean, it's not gonna be exactly the same because it's hand drawn, but that's okay. My tape is not sticking all that well. I don't know if it's because this paper is nicely textured like cotton is. So sometimes the tape is, sometimes it sticks better, sometimes it sticks worse. I don't even know how to define that, but this tape isn't happy about sticking today. Usually it's fine. It was fine yesterday when I did the previous painting. Also, since this is the next day, something very exciting showed up in the mail. So definitely stay tuned for the next video. You are going to definitely want to see that. If you love watercolors, you're gonna wanna be there. All right, I have my reference photo up over on the other screen. I'm trying to remember now that it's been several days since I watched the official tutorial on this, how she wanted us to do things, but it doesn't really matter because kind of do your own thing anyway. Wow, this paint is very rich and deep. I was going to say pigmented, but I kind of get tired of hearing that. But I guess, I mean, that defines it exactly. So not a bad thing to say that. Just seemed like there'd be a better description for it, you know? It's really rich paint. How about that? Whew, yikes. Okay, yep, that's rich. Let's get some greens on the picture here. This is where I'm dying to try that Denise's green because it looks like the absolute perfect green. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's such a pretty green. I'm in love with it. It's one nice thing about doing the masking like this is you don't have to be too careful. I'm gonna put a little green up there. It's not in the tutorial, but I want it. Get a little richer green, maybe. We can mix Denise's green with the perylene green. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there's a turkey outside my window. <laughs> Bobbing along over there. They're not usually alone. See if he's got any friends with him here soon. Oh my goodness, that's just gorgeous. Woo, way too pretty. Okay, I'm really, really liking this palette. I'm glad we tried it out today. Let's get some yellow on the subject. That one is the Aerolide yellow. Get some yellow up there, some yellow going here. Well, the turkey's being loud out there. That's fine, that's fine. Some yellow here and there. Oh, I'm really liking this paper. It's behaving so, so well. 
Okay, let's try this one. Which one is this? Green gold. Oh, that might be a little bright. I didn't realize that was the green gold. Put that back there where those are supposed to be darker. Yeah, I keep losing power today, so I just lost the studio lights. Lost my reference photo over there too because, you know, it was up on my computer. Let's see if that'll give my computer even more excuses to be stubborn. Hey, we got power back. All right, let's find our burnt sienna. Get some of that in. Now I'm kind of just guessing where things are because my reference photo went away with the power. You know what, this is super pretty though so far, so kind of happy with it. All right, now we'll let this dry and we'll take the masking fluid off and maybe I'll risk pulling that reference photo back up. But it is kind of scary when your power keeps going off to have your computer on, but it is on a surge protector, but it doesn't mean everything. Now I'm dabbling some more because I can't help myself. Okay, all right, we'll let that dry. I was getting impatient <laughs> with the masking fluid and got quite aggressive actually at taking it off. And this paper handled a lot of aggression <laughs> pulling that off. So that is very good. It can handle at least the PBO drying gum very well. And I found this is pretty sticky stuff. So it's probably more sticky than the Windsor & Newton masking fluid. Hopefully that helps you out. Look how vibrant, in my opinion, the colors stayed even after they dried. I did come in and try and lighten that green stem a little bit after the fact. And I remembered I was supposed to add salt to this, so I stuck that on real quick. I thought it was going to be too late in most places, but it did put in some of those salt effects. And look at the granulation there from that ultramarine blue. It's pretty interesting. Very pretty. All right, time to paint the flower. We keep losing power though, and then my computer keeps crashing, so my reference photo uh, keeps going away. So I'm gonna see if I can pull that up one more time and then just take a picture of it with my phone so I don't have to have something that relies on juice for me to see what I'm painting. All right, I took a picture of what I'm supposed to paint. <laughs> Wish me luck. It was so much fun doing this the second time. First of all, the paint was more enjoyable to use. Second of all, I had a little experience behind my belt already doing it before, the day before, and so just, I guess don't be afraid to do your paintings more than once. I've actually done that several times. I did it with the portrait, trying to, several different styles. I've done it with several of these Class 101 paintings, and it's pretty fun, actually, to redo a painting. As long as like the drawing and setting up stage isn't too difficult, then I definitely like doing a painting more than once. And you can see, it. in my opinion, this one turned out so much nicer. I just really like how this one worked. Now that it's all dry, I'm just going to add some dark back in because it did kind of fade away a bit. This is some of that green mixture I had left over. I'm just adding some of this dark brown, whatever's on my palette to it. Maybe grab a little more of all of it. I like having the green in there actually, so I'm gonna go grab some more of that perlene green. And then just push the contrast a bit. That's probably good. Maybe add a little bit of the, whatever that color is. I keep going back to it. It's beautiful. It is well, the Quinn burnt orange and the burnt sienna. Okay. Well, that makes sense. But PO48, we got to appreciate that while we have it, right? <laughs> okay. I was just going to put some of that in a few places, liven things up a bit. <laughs> For now, we'll see in 10 minutes how I feel, but let's pull the tape off. Oh, very pretty. I'm liking it. That tape got wrapped around there quite nicely. Okay, I think it's good. It's good. I'll sign it. And we'll take pictures of... I don't really like that one anymore. <laughs> it just got muddy. And that's the reason I wanted to try it again. So I'll take a picture of that one and send up to her and see what she thinks. Hopefully I have enough days left that I'll get a reply from her before I run out of time. I'm down to five days, I think. So there is one picture I put in 10 or 11 days ago that I didn't get a reply on at all. So that's a bummer, but we'll put this one in and hope for the best. Okay, that really is it for real this time. I will let you go. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Something else just showed up in the mail because I actually had to go leave for a second and meet someone for my son and checked my P.O. box on the way home. And there was a gift in there from one of you for my birthday. So we'll open that up here eventually too. I'm excited to see what it is exactly. Okay, bye for now.